Hi everyone, Andrea Walford here for Simon Says Stamp. Today I'm going to show you how I created this Feel Better card using exclusive Simon Says Stamp products and featuring two different techniques, creating a watercolor background with twinkling H2Os and an inlaid die cut technique. So in order to create my watercolor background, I chose four different colors of twinkling H2Os. These are a watercolor paint with mica mixed in, so they have a beautiful shimmer when they're dry. Now they come in these little pots and they're dry and hard, and you need to spritz them with water and let them sit for a few minutes to give the paint a chance to activate. So after my Twinkling H2O's had sat for a few minutes, I then started applying them to my surface. Now I'm working here on a Ranger Ink Essentials watercolor paper, which I cut to 4 and 3 eighths by 5 and 5 eighths of an inch. I wanted it to be larger than the size of my die. I taped it to my nonstick craft sheet, spritz it with some water, and then used a mop style brush to start applying my color. So for each color, I made sure I was starting off with a clean brush. I dipped it into water and then... Um, rubbed my brush into my little twinkling H2O pot to try to pick up a generous amount of pigment. I then started applying the color to my watercolor paper. Now one of the things that I was trying to be very careful to do as I was applying my colors is make sure that the colors that I applied adjacent to one another would blend without creating mud. Then once I had the entire surface of my watercolor paper covered, I removed the tape and then held my piece kind of upright and started tilting it and angling it and then finally I just held it upright like you see there and started letting the colors run down to create that really beautiful blended background. Now I used my heat tool to speed up the drying process making sure that I heated my paper on both sides to try to minimize the warping. I then grabbed my Simon Says Stamp Mod Circle Frame Die and placed it over top of my watercolor paper piece and just held it in place with some painter's tape and then took it to my Big Shot and die cut it. Now once my piece was die cut, I placed it carefully on my surface, trying to keep all the pieces intact so that they would be easy to find later when I was assembling my card. I then took that exact same die and die cut it from a piece of black Simon Says Stamp cardstock. Now in order to inlay my die cut pieces, I thought it would be easier if I took my black mod circle frame and stuck it to a black cardstock panel. Now I cut my panel out of that same Simon Says Stamp black cardstock and the dimensions of that are the size of a card front, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Now because the frame is so fine, in order to stick it down, I decided to use my ThermoWeb Sticky Dots, which is a sheet of little adhesive dots. So I simply pressed my frame onto that sheet and then carefully picked it up with my tweezers. Now because the adhesive is in the form of little dots when you pull your die cut piece off you will get some dots that end up um, in areas where you don't want and that's why I simply took my adhesive remover and I just started removing any of those excess dots that I could see. Now at this point I decided to adhere my panel to the front of my card and I created my card out of a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of 120 pound Simon Says Stamp cardstock which I scored at five and a half inches and folded in half to create an A2 size card. And I stuck my panel down using Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue. So at this point I started inlaying my watercolor die cut pieces into the black mod circle frame on my card front. And to do that I used some of my Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue and it really is very much um, like assembling a jigsaw puzzle. I just made sure that I fit the corresponding pieces into their corresponding places on the black mod circle frame. And I applied every single one of the pieces except for that final circle. Now I die cut a scrap piece of my Simon Says Stamp 120 pound cardstock with just that circular area of the mod circle die and that's what I decided to use for my sentiment. Now the sentiment I'm using comes from the Simon Says Stamp hand lettered encouragement stamp set and I stamped it onto that white cardstock circle using my Simon Says Stamp black ink. Now prior to actually stamping my sentiment off camera I had removed that circular piece and applied a little bit of repositionable adhesive to the back of it to hold it in place on my card as I stamped so that it wouldn't shift while I was stamping. I then carefully removed that piece and applied some dimensional foam adhesive to the back of both the larger circular piece with the sentiment and that smaller circular fragment so that I could pop them up from the surface of the card and just give it more dimension. 
So now at this point, I was thinking that I needed something more for my card. I was kind of thinking along the lines of an outline floral image, but everything I had was way too large. So I decided to grab this large flower from the Simon Says Stamp Greetings and Succulent Stamp Set, mount it onto my small Fisker stamp press, and then using my Ranger Jet Black Archival Ink, I started stamping it several times onto my Ranger's Essentials Shrink Plastic, because my idea was that I was going to stamp it, heat it, shrink it, and then create acrylic accents for my card. Now because stamping on plastic can be a little tricky because of the slick surface and you don't necessarily get perfectly crisp lines every time, I stamped more images than I knew I would need and then I cut each one out with a pair of fine tip scissors. Now working with shrink plastic is super fun and super easy. I put my piece on my table in front of me, lightly held the center down with the tip of my tweezers, and then just started heating it with my Ranger heated craft tool. You can see that the plastic kind of crumples as it shrinks, but the neat thing about shrink plastic is that it eventually straightens out pretty much all the way. And for that final little amount at the end there, while the plastic's still hot, I just grab an acrylic block and then press it down against my table to completely flatten it. Now ultimately I only ended up using three of the flowers that I stamped. So I cut them all out, I shrunk them, and then once they were cool I applied a small rhinestone to the center of each flower and then stuck the flowers to my card using a small mini glue dot placed at the back of the flowers and hidden behind the rhinestones. I also added a scattering of three different sizes of rhinestones around the sentiment just to kind of help give the card a little bit more sparkle but to balance out the rhinestones on the center of the flowers. So that's how I created this card. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I look forward to creating with you again.